This is problem number 1052. It's on page 598. A steam power plant operates on an ideal regenerative Rankine cycle with two open feed water heaters. Steam enters the turbine at 10 megapascal, 600 degrees Celsius, and exhausts to the condenser at 5 kilopascals. Steam is extracted from the turbine at 0.6 and 0.2 megapascals. Water leaves both feed water heaters as a saturated liquid. The mass flow rate of steam through the boiler is 22 kilograms per second. Show the cycle on a TS diagram and determine the net power output of the power plant and the thermal efficiency of the cycle. The first thing to do is to sketch the TS diagram so we can understand what's going on with this thermodynamic cycle. I'm going to make a relatively large one so we can look at it and understand it. So let's draw our vapor dome because we know that the system operates uh, around the vapor dome. And one of the things we were told is that the steam enters the turbine at 10 megapascals, 600 degrees Celsius. So that, that point, that's going to be a superheated point. If you look that up in your text at the um, charts, the, the saturated charts, you'll find that it's in the superheated region. So we can get properties for this state, but this state certainly has a particular pressure and temperature. As a matter of fact, I'm going to start solving the problem by jotting down a little bit of information. We know, in fact, let's see, how do I want to do this? Uh, I'll do it this way. We've got a temperature axis right here. Let's bring it up a little bit. I'm going to label this state 7, and you can see my subscripts there already. And notice that in the boiler, this is still a, a fairly straightforward boiler process. All that happens is water from the condenser uh, is ultimately pumped back up to the boiler pressure. And then in the boiler, the temperature is raised. It's going to be subcooled water. The temperature is raised on the subcooled water until it reaches saturation. Then the water is boiled off, okay, so that's a move from the left-hand side to the right-hand side of the dome. And then more thermal energy is added to the steam in order to superheat it. So there's going to be a move along a line something like this through the boiler. I don't know exactly what it's going to look like yet, but I know that this line is a 10 megapascal line, you see. So I know that at state 7, See, this whole line is 10 megapascals, and the temperature here is 600. Now, where it starts, I don't know. I haven't figured that out yet, right? Uh, that that might, may or may not be interesting along the way, but it will certainly begin at a lower temperature and end up after going through the boiler in the steam turbine at 600 degrees. But it, it, it stays at 10 megapascals that whole time. Okay, so... Those two pieces of information together will allow me to figure out things. For example, I would like to know the enthalpy at state 7, and I would also like to know the entropy at state 7. Well, why do I care about these two things? I care about the enthalpy because the enthalpy is the amount of energy that the steam has in it, and it will help me quantify how much energy the steam gives up as it moves through the turbine, right? And this, the steam is going to expand through the turbine, changing fluid power, and of course that would include the thermal energy as well, changing the power that it has into work out of the turbine. So I care quite a lot about the enthalpy. Well, what about the entropy? Well, the entropy will help me discover information about any other states. For example, the state coming out of the turbine at the end or along the way as bleed steam is pulled off the turbine to go to the open feed water heaters. It'll tell me information about those. So, in fact, I'm not sure exactly how I should draw this leg of the vapor dome. I might go ahead and pull it out a little bit farther. I'll have to, now notice I figured out that state 7 was in the superheated region. As we go down and the steam expands in the turbine and bleed steam is taken off, I'll have to determine whether that bleed steam is removed with, uh, you know, superheat or uh, maybe even inside of the vapor dome. So we'll have to discover that. So if you look up the enthalpy and the entropy, these are the numbers you find. 362, uh, let's see. I don't have it here, but maybe it would be a good idea to just go ahead and make a table of all these things. 
Yeah, let, let's do it that way. Instead of writing it out here, let's go over here and make a table of, of states. So state, uh, let's see, then what else would we care about? Of course, enthalpy, entropy, uh, pressure, temperature, and I'm going to need more space than that. Let me pull those out just a little bit. So now we're in uh, metric units, so the enthalpy will be in kilojoules per kilogram per Kelvin. I'm sorry, kilojoules per kilogram, I'm sorry. That'll be, I was thinking of entropy, the next one. That one is kilojoules per kilogram per Kelvin. Let's have the temperature in degrees Celsius. That'll probably be convenient. And the pressure, uh, I don't want that to run off the screen. Let me move it over a little bit. Pressure in, let's, let's make it kilopascals. There we go. So I already know we'll end up having 10 states. Let me just drop that down. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There we go. So we've got all of our states laid out. And I can start filling in information about each state. There we go. So if you look up the pressure, let me do it this way. Uh, let's see. The pressure at state 7 is 10,000 kilopascals, and the temperature is 600 degrees Celsius. So let's write those in. That's state 7, that's right here. So 10,000 kilopascals and 600 degrees Celsius, these two pieces of information allow us to go into the superheated tables and look up the enthalpy and entropy. So if you do that, you'll find that you, uh, looks like I had to, uh, no, here we go. I was going to say I had to interpolate, but that's not the case here. So this is 3,625.3. That's the enthalpy, and I put that in the wrong place, I'm sorry, 3,625.3, try that again. The entropy is 6.9029 kilojoules per kilogram per kelvin. <clears throat> so there's one state solved, and what I mean by solving a state is primarily knowing the enthalpy in that state. Once we have the enthalpies in all the states, we can pretty much answer any question that's thrown at us. So what else did they say? That was just the first piece of information in the problem statement. I've already read it to you, so I will uh, continue. It exhausts the condenser at 5 kilopascals. What does that tell you? Well, the condenser pressure, what does the condenser do? Well, the condenser takes in steam that's coming out of the turbine and condenses it. Right, that's why it's called the condenser. So it transforms it from a possibly a superheated steam or maybe a slightly saturated steam down to a uh, saturated liquid. Now, this is the condenser. In fact, let's, let's make some notes here. This is the boiler. This is the condenser. Over here, we're going to have the turbine because the job of the turbine is to expand the steam producing work. <clears throat> and I haven't proven it to you yet. Let me just put this point inside of the vapor dome. Now this is going to be state 10, and you'll see why here in just a moment. But they told us that the condenser operates at a pressure of 5 kilopascals. That's what they just told us. So if we look at state 10, oh and by the way this is state 1, we usually label state 1 as the exit of the condenser in a Rankine cycle. So State 1 and state 10 are both at 5 kilopascals. So there's, let's see, state 1, pressure, 5 kilopascals. State 10, pressure, 5 kilopascals. Okay. And that's what this statement tells us. 
<clears throat> Steam is extracted from the turbine at 0.6 and 0.2 megapascals. Now what that means, draw the isentropic turbine line, because understand that they told us this is an ideal regenerative ranking cycle. That means that the uh, turbine will behave ideally and the pumps will be, behave ideally, meaning that they're isentropic. That means that the entropy at state 7 and state 10 are the same, you see. So if I go to state 10, wait a second, I already know the entropy, don't I? It's the same as state 7, 6.9029. Okay. So there's the entropy for state 7 and state 10. But notice that they said steam is extracted from the turbine at two different pressures, 0.6 and 0.2 megapascals. So I'm going to put another state here, and we'll call it state 8, so 7, 8, and finally another state here, state 9, where steam is extracted from the turbine, condenses out in the open feed water heater, giving up its energy to preheat the incoming condensate that's coming from the condenser, see, and send it on back to the boiler. So notice that I've made a big assumption here. I've assumed that state eight and state nine are both in the superheated region. I put them outside of the vapor dome. That may or may not be the case yet. I may have to modify my diagram a little bit, but let's find out. They told us something important. They said that this is uh, this state eight is at, and I wanted to work in kilopascals. Well, I guess they gave us megapascals, so I'll just write it that way. So 0 0.6 megapascals and 0 0.2 kilopascals. I'm sorry, megapascals, pardon me, that wouldn't make any sense. So 600 kilopascals, 200 kilopascals is where steam is extracted from the turbine. Now understand that why fraction or y percent goes this way, that's extracted. But this way, one minus y percent of the flow through the boiler goes this way. If even more steam is extracted here, then z percent, we'll call it, goes this way, and one minus y minus z continues this way. It might end up being messy if I have to modify my diagram. But the point is, this is just a percentage, right? Let's just make up some numbers here. Let's just say that each of these bleed steams, and we don't know this yet, but let's just say that 10% is pulled off here and a further 10% of the flow here is pulled off. Now understand we're talking about the flow through the, through the boiler as our primary basis, right? So if 10% goes this way, then 90% goes this way. And if 10 more percent of the flow here goes this way, then 90 minus another 10 would be 80% going down onto state 10 to condense in the condenser. We don't know those percentages yet, but we will find them out. So water leaves both feed water heaters a saturated liquid. So in other words, there's going to be states over here where the water leaves, and we're going to need state numbers. So I'm going to call this, uh, this will be state 3, because I'm going to need a pump over here to bring the... Uh, the condensate up to the 0.2 megapascal pressure. So I've got a constant pressure line here in the open feed water heater of uh, 0.2 megapascals, and this will be state two. So this, uh, let's label these, this will be the turbine, and we'll call this uh, pump one. And so what's gonna happen here is bleed steam comes off of the turbine and mixes with the stream from pump two and forms point three or state three. In other words, those two mix together and the bleed steam brings up the temperature and the quality of the subcooled liquid coming out of pump one, you see. And this is a good thing because this is a low temperature region where the boiler does not have to add heat. What we're trying to do overall with this system is bring up the average temperature at which heat flows into the system. Because understand, that's what happens here, right? This is where heat comes into the system. I guess I'm going to make a capital Q, I should make it a capital Q dot. Of course, work comes out over here at the turbine, and work comes in at this pump, and the other pump we're going to have in a moment. But that will happen again. In fact, you'll notice that, uh, let's see, somewhere they said it, I thought, No, they didn't mention it. They didn't mention the fact that you'll have to have uh, multiple pumps here. 
But this would be pump one, and then what? Well, we've got another open feed water heater here, and another intermediate pressure, indicating that we will have to have another pump. Because remember, these open feed water heat, heat exchange, excuse me, heat exchange, open feed water heaters, not heat exchangers, are just open devices. They are just mixing chambers. They're nothing more or less than that. And so if there is a pressure of 0.6 megapascals, we can't take the output of pump one and put it in there. Flow would go backwards through the pump. We have to have another pump, call this pump two, to bring state three up to, I'm going to have a new state here, I'll call it state four, up to 0.6 megapascals of pressure, see? That way we can bring in the bleed steam that's coming out of the turbine a little earlier, mix it with state four, and bring us up to state five. So actually, let me put that state inside as I did three, so we've got a little more space. Now state five is back on the vapor dome, you see? And then finally, to get up to 10 megapascals, we'll have to have one more pump to get us up to state six at the boiler pressure. Now, Understand the temperature here at state six is a lot higher than the temperature was way down in state two. In fact, the temperature difference between state two and state six will be very interesting because getting that difference is the whole point of having all this complication and the whole point of having the two open feed water heaters and the bleed steam and the extra pumps and so forth, right? The whole goal is to raise or is to raise the temperature at which is heat at which heat is added, rather than being from state two, being state six. Now this is not a fair comparison because really this pump would have to take up the pressure to a higher level. But understand that I've drawn these uh, lines at too much of an angle. Really they'd be much closer to the uh, uh, leg, the uh, saturated liquid leg on the left side of the vapor dome. But at least for our purposes, this will give us some idea of whether or not all this extra complication is worth it or not. Now, one of the things that they told us I haven't written down yet is the, uh, uh, the flow rate through the boiler. And I also need to note that this is pump three over here to be complete. They told us that the flow rate through the boiler, I will call it M.6, is equal to 22 kilograms per second. That's the flow rate of the water going through the boiler. Now, understand that all of that flow goes through state five, state six, state seven, and at state, state eight. But then at state eight, it splits off. So all of the steam will fall down to state eight, but then some of it will simply be regenerative, or regenerated. Some of it then will continue on and produce more power. All right, so given the pressure and temperature in state seven, I was able to find out everything about that state, but now I should be able to continue because look, I have enough information at state eight. You might look at that and say, well, wait a second, I don't see what all you've got. Looks to me like the pressure at state eight is just 0.6 megapascals. What else do you know about state eight? Well, they told me that this is, or the problem statement said that this is a, an ideal regenerative rate keen cycle. That means that state seven and state eight have the same entropy. For that matter, states seven, eight, nine, and 10 all have the same entropy because they're on an isentropic line. This turbine is isentropic. So let's jot down that information. Let's see, seven, eight, nine, 10 all have the same entropy, 6.9029. And this is very valuable information because look, at state eight and state nine, we also know the pressures. Let's fill those in. At state eight, we have 0.6 megapascals, or 600 kilopascals of pressure. And at state nine, we have 200 kilopascals. Well, that's all of the pressures and all the entropy. So, for example, at state eight, since I know that the pressure is 0.6 megapascals, and I know the entropy at state eight is 6.9029 kilojoules per kilogram per Kelvin, that allows me to look up the enthalpy in state eight, just as this allowed me to look up the enthalpy in entry. In other words, when I know two properties about the, the, the working fluid at this state, I can find out anything else I want to know. Now, if you look at this information, you go to your 
your tables. In fact, it's probably worthwhile to do this. Uh, let's see, I don't think I need the problem statement anymore. We're supposed to show the, let's, uh, let's find out what we're looking for, then we'll go look up this state. We're supposed to find the TS diagram. Well, there's the TS diagram. Pretty obvious. But we're also supposed to find the net power output. And we're supposed to find what else? The efficiency. Thermal efficiency. Okay. So now let's go to the back of the book and let's look up the properties of steam. Now we're in the metric tables. So we'll go to the saturated water tables for uh, uh, metric units. And I was asking about state A. I was trying to figure out what the enthalpy would be in state A. So I'm going to look up 600 kilopascals, and that's on page 916. 600 kilopascals, the temperature would have to be 158.83 if it were saturated. I don't know if it's saturated or not yet. Let's go all the way over to the entropy line, and we'll look up what the entropy of saturated vapor would be. Well, if we had saturated vapor at 600 kilopascals, its entropy would have to be 6.7593. Our entropy is 6.9, which is more than that 6.75. This indicates to me that we're in the superheated region because the entropy is higher. You can think of it as the randomness of the gas is higher than it would be if the gas were saturated, so it must be superheated. So what I need to do then is take this 0.6 kilopascals and this entropy and go over to the superheated tables to find out uh, what the enthalpy is. So let's see, 600 kilopascals or 0.6 megapascals. Uh, let's see, pay, here we go, page 918, bottom center section has a pressure of 0.6 megapascals. And if you look up 6.9029, you'll notice that the closest number we have is 6.9683. And of course, below that is the saturation point, 6.75 kilojoules per kilogram per kilo. So we'll have to interpolate, right? So the enthalpy will end up between, being between the enthalpy of saturated liquid and the enthalpy at 200 degrees Celsius. So in reality, this point is going to end up being at a temperature somewhere between, let's see, it's the saturation is 158 and then the next point up is 200. So this is gonna be slightly lower temperature than 200 degrees. But I don't care about temperature so much. I'm not gonna worry about that for this. What I really care about is enthalpy. You have to perform an interpolation. If you're not sure how to do this, you should pause the video and try. Um, anyway, I interpolated it already. I'm just gonna write down the result for state eight's enthalpy. It comes out to about 2,821.36 kilojoules per kilogram. Okay, well that worked out really well for state eight. Notice that we've solved state seven, state eight. These are both done. Uh, we know everything that there is to know about them. And we can find anything we want to know about state nine and 10. And since we're kind of working on the right hand side already, let's continue with state nine. So we know the pressure in state nine is 0.2 megapascals, right? That's dropped down. That's the bleed steam pressure at this point. We also know that the entropy at state 9 is 6.9029 kilojoules per kilogram per kelvin, just as before. Again, it's all still on this uh, isentropic line. And so putting those two pieces of information together, we should be able to find the enthalpy in state 9. Let's do the same thing we did in state 8. Let's go back to the saturated tables and let's look up 200 megapascals. Well, let's see, if we look up 200 megapascals, I'm on page uh, 916 again. Let's see, the temperature, if it's saturated, would be 120, but we don't know yet. If we go over to the uh, saturated vapor entropy, we find that the number is 7.12. Wait a second, now our entropy is lower. What does that mean? That means that we must have a, a saturated mixture. How do I know that? Well, if the, 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 the fluid here were in fact all steam, all in the vapor phases I've shown, then its entropy would be 6.9029, right? Well, let me back up. 
Let me say that again. If we were actually in the superheated region, then the entropy should be at least the entropy of saturated vapor. I said that backwards, I'm sorry. So if we look up 200 kilopascals again, that's 7.127. The entropy would be, have to be 7.127 for this just to be all saturated vapor on the line. To be out here in the superheated region, it would have to be even higher. And that's not the case. It's lower, in fact. How on earth can we have a fluid, then, that has this low of an entropy? Well, that must mean that it's not all steam, right? Some of it must be liquid. Because notice that the entropy of saturated liquid at 200 kilopascals is 5.5968. Uh, if I had a, a lot of um, saturated... Uh, vapor, which has a higher entropy, 7.1 something, and something lower, 5.5 something, I think it was, or 5.9 something. If I had a mixture of those, I could come up with an average entropy of 6.9, so on. That must be what's happened, right? So that tells me I drew my diagram wrong. This point is, in fact, inside of the vapor dome. Now, I'm going to cheat just a little bit to make my life easier. I'm just going to move the vapor dome over. Okay. So now, point 9, or state 9, the bleed steam state, or the second bleed steam state, is inside of the vapor dome. And that's closer to reality here, right? Or that's uh, more correct than what I had a moment ago. So now, what I have to do is determine the quality in state 9 before I can figure out what the enthalpy is. So to calculate the quality, I'll have to take the actual entropy in state 9 less the entropy of saturated liquid divided by the difference between the entropy of saturated vapor and saturated liquid at 200 kilopascals. I'll let you look up these numbers. By the way, this is also known as SFG. I'm not going to write them in. You come out with an, a quality of about 0 0.9599. So about 96% about or so is the quality. 96% of this stream here is saturated vapor. Okay? So now that I've got the quality, now I can calculate the enthalpy in state 9 as the enthalpy of saturated liquid plus the quality in state 9 times the difference between the enthalpy of saturated liquid and vapor. So I'll let you look up all those numbers again. I'm trying to get to this problem quickly, so I'm not going to write all this down. But you end up with an enthalpy uh, in state 9. So I'm not going to write the number here. I'm going to move it over here and just write it once. You end up with an enthalpy of 2,918 I'm sorry, pardon me, 2,618.30 kilojoules per kilogram, okay? Now this is working out fairly well. I don't really care what the temp, well, I do know the temperature. I may as well write it down. I don't think I did that here. But you can, right? I mean, after all, if this is saturated at 200 kilopascals, then the temperature must be 120.21. That's pretty easy to read off, so let's just add that in. Now, state 10 is at 5 kilopascals, and we can be sure that it'll end up being in the saturated region. So we'll have to do something similar for state 10 that we did for state 9. In fact, let me work my way back up and use the board space, hopefully effectively that way. So the pressure at state 10, we know, is the condenser press pressure, 5 kilopascals. The entropy in state 10 is the same that it's been on this whole line, 6.9029 kilojoules per kilogram per Kelvin. And we realize that we're going to be in the vapor dome, and so we'll have to calculate, first of all, the quality in state 10. Now, it's going to look a lot like this, right? It's going to be based on the entropy. It'd be the entropy at state 10 less the entropy of saturated liquid over SFG. Now understand that this SF and this SF are two different things, right? This entropy of saturated liquid had to be found at 200 kilopascals, whereas this entropy of saturated liquid needs to be looked up at 5 kilopascals, because that's the pressure for the state. Also, SFG will be different, you see.
because SFG is the difference between SF and SG. Again, I won't write down the numbers for you. Uh, I'll just note that the quality you come up with in state 10, and of course you should go and look this up. You should verify that I did all this right. You know that I do make mistakes. So you should verify all this. So the quality in state 10, I guess I should add that into my table, but I don't really have the space.